Now that we've viewed depth contours, let's move on to see velocity vectors. To see our velocity vectors, we're going to the tin display results and changing that from result depth to result velocity vector. When we move to the next time step, you will see very tightly spaced contours. These are no longer depth values. These are velocity values. If we were to move back to the first time step, we would see there'd be almost no velocity at all. But then as we stepped through the project, you would notice the contours become more closely spaced as we get higher velocities near the sides where the water is a bit deeper. Now, if we wanted to see the arrows rather than the contour lines, we'd come up to our toggle and toggle off our velocity, sorry, our contours. Now what we see is a velocity arrow at the center of each one of the cells. If we move on, these will get a little bit bigger. And once again, this is because the water is getting deeper and concentrating near the edges after it comes down the slope. Now these ones are quite small to see right now, these arrows. They're plotted at one meter per second of one meter long. So if we'd like one meter per second to be a bit longer, we went with two, me two meters long. We could change the arrow ski scale and move on. You'll notice that they're a bit bigger. We might even exaggerate to five so that one meter per second is shown at five meters long. So it makes it much easier to see the velocity vectors. So then as we step farther along, you're able to see these get much larger in this area as we get the higher velocities concentrating once again near the edge and the lower velocities going down the sides.